Good evening to everyone. Uh, thank you for your attention to the gospel tonight. I'm sure you are tired of looking at a screen, um, but we're thankful that you're willing to take a few minutes to consider the message of the gospel. Our brother Dave, in his prayer, has already spoken about the distance between sinners, between us and God, and I would just like to read with you about that a little bit. First, in uh, the Old Testament book of Isaiah, in chapter 59, Isaiah 59 and verse 1 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities, iniquities is a word for sin, your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Your sins have separated between you and your God. Now, I'd like to take uh, a few minutes tonight to speak to you about some of the lepers in Scripture. Uh, the last time that I was able to join in this message, we uh, spoke about uh, lame or palsied individuals in the Scripture. And many of the miracles that the Lord Jesus performed provide excellent pictures of salvation. When we think about a blind person, we think about the difficulty of someone understanding the truth of their sins and understanding the way of salvation. When we think about a lame person, we think about someone's weakness uh, against the condemnation of their sins and our weakness to return to God. When we think about a leper, the point that is emphasized to me is the separation that exists between us and God. A separation not that God has chosen, but that we as sinners have chosen and that our sins have created a separation between us and God. Now, if you have heard a David T. Zudema Sunday school lesson, perhaps you have seen Dave transform himself into a leper. Or I'm sure if you attend gospel meetings or Sunday school regularly, you are familiar with this idea of a leper. And of course, the most famous leper that we are often taught about is Naaman from the Old Testament. There were at least four lepers in the Old Testament. There was a Jewish woman, a very important Jewish woman, Miriam, the sister of Moses, who received leprosy as a punishment and was cured. There was Naaman. He was not Jewish. He was Syrian. He was a foreign man who had leprosy, and he was healed. There was a king who was, became a leper as a result of his disobedience. And there was a servant who as well became a leper because of his disobedience. And so we see in the Old Testament that leprosy had no respect for persons. Anyone could be a leper. Anyone could be struck down with that terrible disease. And the same is true uh, today of sin. Leprosy is just uh, a physical ailment, a disease that is a picture of the universal problem of sin. And no one is spared from sin and the consequences of sin. Jews, Gentiles, men, women, kings, servants, boys, girls, older people, everyone has been struck by this problem of sin. And the Bible is very clear in sharing that truth with us, that we are all sinners and of the reality of the consequences of our sins, that our sins have separated between us and our God. If you're familiar with the New Testament, uh, there's something recorded in Luke chapter four. There was a day that the Lord Jesus came to his home synagogue in the city of Nazareth. It was a very momentous day. He was asked to do the scripture reading for that day. He read from the book of Isaiah and he told them, that that day he had read was fulfilled. He was proclaiming to them that he was indeed the Messiah. The people were shocked that he would make such a statement. And the Lord Jesus gave them two examples to impress on them the importance that they receive his message. One of those examples concerned Naaman, the leper. And what he said was that there were many lepers in the time of Elisha, the prophet, but none of them were healed save Naaman, the Syrian. 
And this highlights something very important to us. It highlights to us that none of us can say uh, that we are entitled to salvation. Salvation is only available through the mercy and grace of God. It is available, but we are not entitled. We must receive it. We must receive it on God's terms. We are preaching this gospel tonight because salvation is offered to you. But in those ancient times, only Naaman came into the great blessing of healing from his leprosy when there were so many who needed it. And there are so many in our world today who need salvation from sins. But have you come into that blessing? Have you received the blessing that is available, not through the prophet Elisha, not through any other man, only through the Lord Jesus Christ? There is healing. There is forgiveness for sins available. When we think about the life of the Lord Jesus, there are just two different accounts of the Lord Jesus healing specific lepers. There are times that we're told in a group of miracles he did that he healed many lepers, but there are just two individual accounts of healing a leper. One time he healed one leper, one time he healed 10. And I'd just like to read with you about them in the Gospel uh, of Luke. The first place is in Luke chapter 5 and verse 12. And I'll just read it for you briefly. And it says, And it came to pass, as he, the Lord Jesus, was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he, the Lord Jesus, put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he charged him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing, according as Moses commanded, and for a testimony unto them. But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him, of Jesus, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. So we learn of this one man, this lone leper who was healed. This is very early uh, in the ministry of the Lord Jesus. It's recorded for us in the Gospel of Matthew, and it, it occurs as the Lord returns from preaching the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, in the Gospel of Mark, we're told that the man came and kneeled. In the Gospel of Luke, where we're re we read, we read that the man fell on his face. And in the Gospel of Matthew, we read that he worshiped. So you can see the progression. This Lord, this leper saw the Lord Jesus. He came, he kneeled, he fell on his face, and he worshiped. What a wonderful approach to seeking salvation. If you would like to be saved this evening, go to your room, kneel. Fall on your face. Recognize who this one is, the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Savior of sinners. Well, each of the gospel writers gives us a little bit different picture of the position the man took. All three of them give us the same statement. The man said to the Lord Jesus, Lord, if thou wilt, if you are willing, you can make me clean. It's a tremendous attitude. So often, and rightly so, when we preach the gospel, we ask this question. Do you want to be saved? Are you willing to be saved? But we would ask you a different question this evening. Is the Lord Jesus willing to save you? How would you answer that question? The Lord responded to the man in this account. He said, I will. And that is the testimony of the scriptures tonight. That God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. What God wants for you this evening is your salvation. He is willing. Have you received this great salvation from him? Now, a leper would be very conscious of separation. Because of COVID, we are living in a time where we are all experiencing separation. And many people are being affected by the separation, by the limitations of our time. I was seeing a patient this week, a man in his 90s. He lives in a nursing home, and his nursing home has a remarkable record. While well, some of their staff has gotten COVID, none of the people who live there have come down with COVID. There aren't too many nursing homes who can say that. 
But the last time I saw the man with his daughter, they were complaining that he was getting weak and he was losing the ability to walk. And this time he was doing so much better because the nursing home realized in their great caution and in separating residents and people, they were keeping these 90 year olds and 100 year olds locked in their rooms where they weren't getting up and moving around and their muscles were wasting away. Separation has an effect. Sin has separated between us and our God, and it has an effect. You may have become very accustomed to the reality of your separation from God. You may be very accustomed that if you try to pray, God feels very distant, very far away. But this is not what God intends. This is the result of sin that has separated between us and God. Separation was something a leper would understand. When they were diagnosed from leprosy, it meant leaving their home, it meant leaving their job, it meant leaving their family, leaving their city, going out, staying away from people. And if anyone came near crying out, unclean, stay away from me, I could infect you. What a terrible effect this must have had on people. Imagine what it was for this man who fell on his face and worshiped and said, if you are willing. And when the Lord Jesus responded and said, I am willing, we read, he stretched forth his hand and touched him. It's quite possible no one had touched this man for many years. Luke tells us that the man was full of leprosy. The disease was far advanced, but the Lord Jesus touched him. There was no mistaking his problem, but the Lord Jesus touched him. You and I might be dull in seeing the reality of sin and the problem this evening, but it is evident to the Lord Jesus. It is the reason he died on the cross. But in spite of the fact that we are sinners separated from God, he is willing to draw near and spiritually he is willing to touch you, to heal you, to save you this evening. So learn the lesson of the one leper who came humbly and worshiped and said, if you are willing, you can save me. And the Lord Jesus is willing to save you this evening. The second account uh, about healing lepers is just found in Luke chapter 17 and verse 11. And I will read that with you uh, briefly here again, Luke 17 and 11. And we read, and it came to pass as he, the Lord Jesus, went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him 10 men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed, they were healed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice, glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, were there not 10 cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that returned to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. In the miracles of the Lord Jesus, just these two accounts give us the specific healing of lepers. And as the first is a remarkable account, so is this one. Consider the details here. The the separation of leprosy is emphasized. They stood afar off. They had to cry out. And the Lord Jesus responded to them. In this case, he didn't come close and touch them, but he gave them directions to go to the priest and to show themselves. This was the commandment of the law. At the moment they turned and left, they were still lepers. But we read here together that as they went, they were healed. An amazing thing. Their healing was linked with their obedience. When they obeyed the word of the Lord Jesus Christ, they received the healing from their leprosy. Nine continued on, but there was one of them who realized, the reason I am healed is because of him. And he turned back to return to the Lord Jesus and to give him thanks. 
God has linked blessing with obedience. God has lift, linked salvation with faith and with belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Many people, especially those who hear the gospel frequently, get themselves all tied up in knots considering this fact. Did the leper earn his healing? You would say no. He just obeyed what the Lord Jesus told him, and he was healed. This is what God is commanding in the gospel. The command of the gospel is to repent and to believe the gospel, to receive the Lord Jesus Christ by faith as our Savior. We don't earn salvation. We don't merit salvation through belief. But God delights to give blessing because of obedience. Obedience brings blessing. Let me just give you an example to help highlight that to you. Suppose at Thanksgiving, you said, you know, I've been feeling bad for Pete. Uh, I think he's really suffering with the separation of COVID restrictions. We're going to invite him to our home for Thanksgiving. And you made a huge feast. The tur turkey was perfectly prepared. The stuffing was there. Um, the string beans, the uh, sweet potatoes, not a dish was missing. I came in. I ex willingly accepted your invitation. I sat at your table. And I sat there for a couple hours, and I was very polite in conversation. I, I mentioned each piece, uh, item of food you had taken time to prepare. I said, that turkey smells wonderful. Uh, those yams are perfectly cooked. But suppose if after two hours I left your dinner table and I had never tasted anything, what would your response be? Well, one, you would think I was very strange. And two, I think you would be offended. You would say, we went to all this work and expense, and he mentioned it. He recognized it, but he never took it. He never enjoyed it for himself. I would, I could have, I recognized what you had to offer, but I never received it. And, you know, there's many people who listen to the gospel, and they say, that's a wonderful message. Uh, the Lord Jesus, he was quite a man, but they go away, and they never received the blessing that God has intended for them. Let me give you another example. Suppose I came to that Thanksgiving dinner and I partook of it, I ate it. But when the meal was done, I said, I just wanna take a moment here and I want to thank my fork for allowing me to enjoy this Thanksgiving feast. And in fact, I took a picture of the fork and I posted it on social media. And I said, I just wanna to recognize to everyone the amazing meal that this fork has brought me. Again, you would say, this man is insane. The fork didn't provide the meal. The fork was just the means that he enjoyed it. We went to all the expense. We went to all the work to provide this meal and to pay for this food. That's what it's like when people get all tripped up and tied up on the idea of, do I believe enough? How do I believe in the right way? They're focusing on the wrong thing. God has gone to all the expense to provide salvation. He has given his son. The Lord Jesus has paid everything at the cross of Calvary. Faith is the means by which you can enjoy it. You can receive it, and it can be yours. That is what the leper recognized as he walked, as he saw himself healed, and he looked at the other nine and saw their healing. He realized he did this, and he turned around. And he returned to the Lord Jesus and he thanked him for healing him. That's what thanksgiving, that's what salvation is. When a sinner understands Jesus did it all, I can be saved because of his work. And they just thank him for dying for them on the cross of Calvary. Have you received it? When did you thank God? When did you thank the Lord Jesus for dying for you and providing salvation for you? So there are just these two specific accounts of lepers in the Bible. But there is one very interesting reference in Matthew and Mark at the end of their accounts. Well, the religious leaders were told are plotting a way to kill the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus is welcomed into a home, the home of a man called Simon the leper. It was in Bethany, and most people connect this with the details in John 12. But in the home of Simon the leper, the Lord Jesus 
was with friends. A meal was provided. And that is where Mary came and honored him uh, and gave him those precious ointments that he said she had anointed him for his death. That all happened in the home of a leper. We're not told who Simon the leper is. Some wonder if he could have been that lone leper that was healed at the beginning of the Lord's ministry. Some wonder if he could have been the father of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. All those questions will have to be answered in heaven. But it's wonderful to think about a leper who was where he belonged. He was back in his home. He was maybe back with his family. Most importantly, he was enjoying the fellowship of the Lord Jesus. Why was that? He had been healed. He had been saved. And we would like to highlight this to you in the gospel. Yes, you need to be saved to avoid eternal punishment in hell. But God intends so much more. He has such a greater blessing for you that would start in this life. He wants you to be where he belongs in his will, enjoying his people, enjoying his son. And all this blessing comes through receiving salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why we preach this message tonight, so that you might know the blessing of salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's interesting that when we think of many of the different types of miracles that the Lord Jesus did, we see many of them echoed in the works of the apostles in the book of Acts. The Lord Jesus healed lame men, and you don't have to read too far into Acts until Peter and John are healing a lame man at the gate beautiful. The Lord Jesus healed blind men. And as you read through the book of Acts, there are at least a couple examples of men who become blind for a short period of time. The Lord Jesus released people possessed by demons. And you remember the famous account um, where the apostle Paul freed that girl uh, in Philippi who was possessed with a demon. The Lord Jesus healed dead men. And even that is accomplished by the apostles. Paul raised Eutychus back from the dead. But there's no mention of any leper that I can find in the book of the Acts. And I wonder why that is. And I would just bring you back to our starting point because leprosy emphasizes separation. Your sins have separated between you and your God. But he is able to save. And when the Lord Jesus came, what he did was remove the reason for that separation. That was pictured when the veil of the temple was rent in twain, ripped down the middle. The Lord Jesus can remove your sins. There's no reason for you to be separated from God. And I wonder if that is why we don't read of a leper uh, any further after the ascension of the Lord Jesus. But let me finish by just commending this Savior to you the one who is able to save. His, his arm, his power to save is not short, is not limited. His ability to hear your desire for salvation uh, is not limited. If you would come, he is willing. Fall down before him this evening, cry out to him, ask him to save you, and thank him for what has already been done by the Lord Jesus Christ at the cross of Calvary.